Hello everyone and welcome back to this month's DIY project. Today I am going to be making something for my new shed. So I got my shed a couple of weeks ago um, and I'm going to be showing you how to put gutter in on it and a living wall but first I do actually need to get it up. So this month I'm going to show you how to make some shelving for it. So the shed came on a pallet and obviously I'm going to make them out of pallets so I shall show you how to do this. These are going to be perfect whether you put them into your shed, whether you want them in your hallway to keep all your keys and everything in or even in your kitchen so yeah there's plenty of possibilities with these uh, shelves that I'm going to show you how to make now. First up I'm going to show you like always what tools and materials we'll need for this project. So I've got my favourite mitre saw here and we've got the impact driver, the drill, you're going to need a jigsaw, tape measure, some screws, we've got some black paint that I'm going to be using, uh, we've got some drill bits and we've got the sander. And we've also got a piece of cardboard, um, pencil, scissors and paint brushes. And then material wise we have a palette. These are quite thin sets that have come from the pallet, so you might have to change uh, your dimensions depending on what size your pallet is. And I've also given these sand already just to um, take some of the roughness away as they were quite rough. But um, you can do this afterwards or before, it doesn't matter. So first things first, we're going to start cutting our slats. So I've got five slats here. Um, it, you may need a little bit more. I think you could probably get two shelving units out of one pallet, which is great. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our widest slat here. So I've measured them all, made sure I've got the widest one. This is gonna be our base. I'm gonna cut the ends to square them up. Um, and then I'm gonna measure 70 centimeters and I'm gonna cut that to length. I am going to do this on four lengths. I'm going to leave one length, which is going to be our ends. Um, so yeah, I'll get cutting. Like always, if you just uh, pile up some wood this end, and that's a great support for your piece of wood. I've taken quite a big chunk off there because I've left the nails in and also it's got rid of that knot. So if you've got the room on your piece of slat, pick the best sort of bit of wood out of it. So we want 70 centimetres, 700 mil. These bits are now rubbish and that's one bit cut. I'll just do the rest. If you don't want to measure each one out, you can place your first one that you cut. Line it up like that with the end and draw a pencil mark down it. And that means that even if this first one was a slightly out that you cut, they're all gonna be the same, which is what you want. The other great thing about the mitre saw is that it comes with a laser line. So can you see that there? So there's no need for me to worry about where my cut is going to be because I can see it really clearly with that laser line. is how it is going to look so I haven't screwed anything this is just balanced um, but yeah that is how it's roughly going to look what I think the first thing I should do is move away these two. Oh, it's going to fall it's going to fall yeah so I'm going to keep these ones here and I'm going to join these together with these pieces that are cut so I'm just going to measure in from each end so I've got an equal distance on each end um, and then I'm going to screw through so I'm going to use my pilot drill which I need to set up and then I'm going to be using these screws to go through so whatever screws you use you need to just make sure that they are going to be right for the thickness of your pallets so actually these ones are a little bit long so I might have to go into the shed and find some shorter ones so I've found some short screws um, and now I'm just going to measure in, I'm going to say 60mm in. Now you can get a um, square and put a whole line through so then you know that these are in exactly the right place which I'm going to do. So I'm just going to make sure these bits of wood are all lined up 
and they butt up to each other. So we're going to fix our piece of wood on there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pilot drill, I drill. Ooh, got a chicken up here with me. Olive. grab my four mil drill bit because these are quite small screws. Hello, Alright, so I'm just going to put two screws in each end. So I'm just going to get my pilot drill. And if we stagger them slightly then it makes a stronger hold. There you go. That is the back of your shelf. Okay, so we have our back. We're going to turn this over and it's going to stand up like that. Then this one is going to be our base. So I'm just going to double check that this is the widest um, piece, which it is. And what we're basically going to have to do now is screw from behind. Olive, do not eat them. We're going to have to screw from behind into this slat here. Now, because these slats are quite thin, it's going to be a little bit tricky. So the easiest way to do that is measure the th thickness of your slat. So that's around 14 mil. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to turn this board over, which makes it slightly difficult because we've put these on. But I'm just going to measure 7 mil up. So for around 5 screws in this one two three four five yeah we want one sort of in the middle one either side and then one there so we're going to get our pilot drill and we're just going to drill through just on that line try and go as straight as you can Now we've got all of our holes lined up there and we've got our piece of wood there so now we just need to drill this uh, screw this together so these ones i'm going to be using slightly bigger screws because we can go as deep into that pallet as we like so again just make sure that all of these are squared up at either end which they feel like it When you've got a couple of screws in, you can move it so then we've got it hanging off the edge of the table and that gives you a nice square edge to work to. Sorry if you've got Olive's butt in your face while you're watching this. And there we have it. And that is all done. So now we need to do the same with this one here. Now this one is going to be seen and obviously those screws are going to be seen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it out this time so it's all nice and accurate and perfect. Um, I will be painting this afterwards so it's not a huge deal if um, they're not accurate or they're not perfect with each other. So do the same, I'm going to measure 7 mil up. Now what I'm going to do to make this extra neat is I'm going to use one of these which is a countersink. They come with most drill bit sets. And 
this is just going to create a little hollow for your screw to sit in so everything stays flush. Now I've countersunk the uh, screw holes. I've brought it to the edge of the table. I find it a lot easier to do it like this because if you can imagine, if you're trying to go really close to the table and you're screwing in, you'll end up screwing in at an angle because you can't get this lower. So you want to bring it to the edge of the table and that will help you get it in square. So it's all lined up. There we go. Now we just need some ends for this. So this is where you can get creative and I'm going to show you how. I have just grabbed this off cut here. So that's probably something that we could use to blank this in. But I have got another length over there. So what we're going to do, I know that this has got a square edge down here. So I'm just going to draw around it onto my cardboard. You can use paper as well if you want. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure how high we need this. So we're gonna go from the inside and then measure up to the top here. That is 12.80. So then we need to grab our tape measure and mark 12.80 on here. Sometimes again, a little tip, it's easier to go from sort of around number 100 mil um, rather than starting at the tip there. So, what do we say, 1280? 1280. So that is gonna be the start. Now, we can make a lovely pretty pattern to come down to this point. So let's measure that point there. So again, going from the inside, that is around 52 mil. So I'm just going to measure that up as well. I'm going to measure it on this side because that's where we're going to go to. So now we can make a lovely pattern that's going to go from there to there. So I've got my rough pattern and now I'm just going to cut it out. So this is quite an intricate pattern, but you can use um, any pattern that you fancy. You could go for just a diagonal line, you could make it tapered, you can do whatever you like to so be as creative as you want. So now I'm gonna grab my wood that I'm gonna be using for these end pieces. So again, I'm just gonna cut them nice and square, and then I'm probably gonna cut them about roughly this length, um, and then that'll be perfect for me to place this on and draw around it. So I've got my piece of wood that's all drawn out and I've got my jigsaw. I'm gonna turn it round closer to exact because we want a nice cut on this. Um, so as I said in my last video that I did, if you do, don't feel that confident with doing this because uh, obviously it's quite fiddly work, you can clamp this to the table using a G-clamp um, and then that gives you both hands free. You don't have to have one hand near the blade. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead. There we go, so I'm just going to give this a sand around the edges and neaten it up. So I have cut my piece, uh, cut two of these identical. So because I'm using the same slats from the same palette, in theory, this should just slot in. Um, it will slot in, it's a little bit tight, but that's actually a good thing because then it keeps it in place while we're trying to screw it together. Um, but if it's not the same size, it needs to be obviously bigger so then you can cut it down. Um, so let's just see if I can squeeze this in. Nice tight fit there. There you go. Pretty pleased with that. Now, because we don't want any more screws in the front of this, and this isn't holding any weight, I'm just gonna put two screws through there and then I'm gonna put one underneath going through. Now just flip that round. And I've taken the countersink bit out and now I'm just going in with the four mil drill bit. So again, you want to get that seven mil in so then you don't split the wood. All 
all done. I'll just do the other end now. And there we are, it's all done. I'm really, really pleased with that, uh, considering it's literally cost me nothing apart from a few screws and the help of all my iron hell tools. So yeah, I'm gonna give this coat of paint um, and I think I might make a few of these for my shed because I think they're gonna come in really handy. And there it is, all finished with the detail on the ends and all stacked up with lots of twine, books, tea bags and some gardening bits. But I'm actually thinking I might make another one of these and put some succulents in it in some pots which will look really nice maybe in the kitchen. 